everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Shawnee and we are Glitzy Stitches Home DIY. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome. Hope everyone's having a fantastic day. Today we're going to be participating in the Let's Be Creative Challenge. It's hosted by my friends Missy of Crafty Cove, Emily of Farm Charm Chic, Amanda of Six Kids and a Glue Gun, and my dear friend Kiki of Kiki's DIYs. I'll have each of their channel links listed in my description box below, as well as a link to the playlist. Okay, without further ado, let's get crafting. Okay, so I purchased this 11 by 14 frame just yesterday at the thrift store here in a neighboring town, Volunteers of America. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get all of these tags off. And I'm going to clean the glass on the outside of our frame with some 70% alcohol. Just like so. It's going to get all that sticky off. We're going to take some Maze Chalk Paint by Waverly and we're going to paint our wooden frame just like so. Now I've cleaned this off as well. This is going to take two to three coats. I'm putting the first coat on lightly, so the second and third coat maybe will cover well. Just roll light. Okay, we have our three coats of paint on. We'll be taking now some antique wax by Waverly. I'm simply just going to brush this a little bit here on our frame. Love it. It's a little bit more on one side than the other, but that's fine. It gives it that good vintage feel. All right. Yeah, I love that. I think it's gorgeous. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the sides. We have our 11 by 14 wood frame finish. Now what we're going to do is the mat. I'll set that frame aside to dry. Now this mat is the absolute perfect size of this piece of paper. This piece of paper is one from a collection that I purchased at Meyer, at Meyer, I'm sorry guys, at Michael's from one of the books. Just like this, I'm just gonna trace it on each side. I'm going to go in the center right here. You can use your X-Acto knife to cut this out. I have a utility knife. I'm going to pierce this and I'm just going to simply take my scissors and I'm going to cut around it. Okay, now here's our mat. What we're going to do, I have this cut out. We went ahead and we cut that out. We're going to use the opposite side, of course, so there's no pencil marks, but we're just going to take our color changing school glue just like so put it all over our mat like this when it's ready to adhere it turns colors okay now And there we go. Just like that. That turned out really well. 
for a penny imperfections we have this black washi tape and we're going to take and we're going to just apply it to the sides of our piece Just like that. When it finished applying our washi tape, making sure that we have some overhang on each end, just like that. That looks amazing. Okay, so now we want to take the back and I'm going to apply a piece of cardstock to the back of our cardboard using this milk chocolate brown color and I'm just going to take each side like this and I'm just going to draw a line nice and straight okay. just like that we're going to take our friskers cutter Lining our pencil mark up, and we're going to cut it just like that. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is again, we're going to take some of the Elmer's color changing glue. We're going to add it to the back of our frame. sure to get some good coverage. There we go. We're going to take our paper and we're going to apply it just like this. Any tweaks you need to make to this you can do. Just a short Time. And if you want to, you can also roll this. Okay. Okay. I'm going to need to make a few adjustments on the side. I'm going to trim these sides up. We'll be right back. I've taken my scissors and I've trimmed that right up. Now what we want to do is I purchased this honeybee beeswax wrap at our local antique shop yesterday actually and what we're going to do I'm not going to glue this down or anything I'm just going to center this like so I'm going to cut around to where I know it looks pretty even place it like so Let's stick it right on here and the warmth of your hand is all you need for this you don't want to use your quick iron or anything like that because it will definitely melt so just like this and what this is is this is literally a piece of 100% cotton material and it is dipped in beeswax and it's used to wrap vegetables it's used to wrap bowls it supposedly keeps your product fresher so okay now I'm just going to cut around this just like so guys Oops, sorry, out of camera range there, just like this. And I'll be right back. Heating this with my hands very well, just like so. And then earlier, I printed off my Cricut, just on my dis design space, this honey jar. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this right in the center, as good as possible, and I'm going to put it up towards the top more in the center because we have a word we're going to add at the bottom and again I'm just pressing with the heat of my hand so this sticks to this okay just with the heat of my hand now we also have the word honey I think this is so cute turning out very well okay, let me get this centered Thank you. 
And again, just from my design space, if you don't have a Cricut, you can go online, you can print one of these, you can use the Dollar Tree lettering for your words. Um, you don't even have to use the honey jar. You can just use any word you want. But this beeswax is amazing to work with, this beeswax wrap. Just like so. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put our picture in our frame and we'll be right back. We've applied our back to our honey sign, and I think this is so cute. I think this turned out absolutely adorable. What we're going to do is we're going to add a sweet little bow down here, and we're going to call this a finished DIY. Our little bow, I've just simply taken some quarter inch ribbon, and I'm going to add a little dot of hot glue just to the back, just a wee little bit. And I'm going to place it right in the center, right here. I think this turned out absolutely adorable. On to DIY number two. DIY number two. We're going to be using this lantern I purchased at the Dollar Tree. One of the napkins I received from Amazon. I think these are just gorgeous. We're going to be using this side today. And also, I've taken the handle out of this little vintage needlepoint that I bought yesterday. And I have some Mod Podge matte finish in our little cup here. Okay, first thing we're going to do is I need to get this off here, and it's hot glued on there pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and take my heat gun, guys, and get this off, but I don't want to do it on camera because it's very loud. So I'm going to go ahead and get that off. We'll be right back. Top of our lantern, we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab some antique wax by Waverly. We don't need much, just a little bit. Go ahead and take it right off the top here, like so. Here we go. I think that looks beautiful. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to take our napkin. And again, we're going to use only the full B side. These napkins are absolutely gorgeous. I have my water pen here. Now I did purchase this at Michael's. I'll leave the link to this if I can find it in my description box below. They do have these at the Dollar Tree now, I understand. I haven't seen them at my Dollar Tree yet. What we're going to do is I'm going to measure this out just like that. Maybe just get my water out. There we go. Get my water flowing here. And just like that. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull. Just gently pull. Just like that. Now, I'm going to remove this. And I'm going to lay some Mod Podge down. The smaller brush. And I'm not going to Mod Podge over this. I'm just going to put this one layer on. We want it nice and smooth so there's no wrinkles. The least wrinkles, the better. 
Just like that. Okay. okay, I'm going to let that sit and we're going to go ahead and we're going to do all of the sides, including this side. And to remove the excess from the sides, we're just going to simply take our sanding block that I purchased at the Dollar Tree. like so until you get it just how you want it there we go looks awesome okay so we have each of the opposite sides done guys on our little lantern we're going to go ahead and we're going to do this side the same one the light shines through in the exact same manner, but first I want to measure this. I want this to have a whole lot of bees on it. Well, there we go. That'll have a couple bees right there. I think that's going to look absolutely beautiful. And give them that nice look. We're going to go ahead and we're going to run a bead of hot glue on each corner and run some jute twine right down. So first I'm going to do that, run a little bit of jute right down this corner. It kind of frames it out, just gives it that finished look. And also ran a line of jute all the way around. We're going to go ahead, we're just going to snip this off. There we go. Put a little more hot glue right here. And I'm just going to take my spatula and make sure that's laying down. And we're going to do the same thing on the bottom. We're going to come back. We're going to put the handle on this. We're going to light this up and we're going to call this a finished DIY. Any imperfections you see, you can just go literally and just clip them off with your pliers, your trimmers, your wire cutters, any imperfections that you might see on here. This is adorable. Okay, what we're going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my handle. I pre-drilled a hole at the top just with my little drill bit. Go ahead and screw it in here just like so. Just like that. I think that's absolutely adorable. Okay, now we have one more thing we're going to do. I have this ribbon that I purchased at Hobby Lobby. Now, if this looks like it's too much, guys, I'll just omit it, but I think it might be just perfect for this. It is literally like greenery. It's so cool. I've never seen this before. Let's see. Now I have to find out where it starts. I'm going to put this on here, just like so. I think this is going to be awesome. Just like that. It's that easy. That simple, guys. Okay. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I'm really happy with the way this turned out. And for DIY number three, I cannot get through a bead challenge without doing something known. 
So what I've decided to do is we're going to go ahead and make my spring gnome shoes. Now, I've taken a paper towel roll and I simply just cut it down and we're going to flatten this out. We're going to measure out two inches apart. And at that two inch mark, we're going to go all the way down. Okay. We're going to measure to three and a half inches. And such. That's what we're going to do here. I just want to get these cut to the proper measurement so we can start constructing the shoes. Here we go, just like so. Okay, now we want to roll these over just like that. Okay, but first I'm going to put these all together and I'm going to make sure they're all right. Okay, any differentiations we can just cut and trim. Like that. Okay. Now, I want to go ahead. I want to take one piece of the paper towel roll. I'm going to roll it over just like this. Just knead it just like that with some hot glue. You may want your finger protectors for this. This glue is hot. Anything like that happens, any of it comes up, you can just tack it down. Just like so. I'm doing is I'm going to put the two pieces together just like so. I'm going to fold them. I'm going to take my scissors and we're going to go around in a half circle just like this. What we're doing is making the notch for our shoes to fit on the top. What we're doing is making the notch for the top of our shoe to fit right into the toe of our shoe, just like that. We're going to go ahead, we're going to add our hot glue right here. Bring this over, just like so. to do is we want to make the stable part of our shoe which is going to be the other piece which is remaining so we're going to take we're just going to cut this in half guys I'm just going to eyeball this and actually you can discard the one because all you're going to do is you're going to turn around and you're going to cut this in half again and you're going to have your shoe stabilizers that's all there is to this guys okay so now we're going to go ahead we're going to glue the top of our shoe into the toe of our shoe just like that okay and you just want to make it to where they will stand up straight okay. just like that does not matter what way you put these on and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to enforce it with some glue right here just to make sure just going to hold on to it for a moment Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get the other one put together. We're going to go ahead and put our supports on. And what you want to do, guys, is you simply just want to put a dab of hot glue right here. Put your toe support on right in the center. Again, if you'd like to use your finger protectors and or your spatula for this, you can. 
I'm going to go right back like this now. You can make these as pointy as you want or as flat as you want. I usually always go flat, guys. Can't help it. I just do. Then you want to bring this all the way back, right back here. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try to center this just like that. I'm going to bring my support strap back just like that. Okay. I'm going to hold that for a minute. And I'm going to give you the trick of what helps it to stand. Okay, see, mine's crooked. It's crooked as ever. And I want it crooked. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to re-glue it right there. Glue up that hot glue right there to reinforce. There we go. That's better. Get over there. That's better. That works. Okay. Now on the bottom, see how it's kind of poofy right there? Kind of sticking up. Show you guys like that. Just take your hot glue gun, guys. Go like this. This is what I do each time. And boom. Press it till it holds. Then your shoe should stand up. Keyword is should. <laughs> there we go. Gonna let that set. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna put our other shoe together. Then we're gonna come. We're gonna decorate. And we have our little bee material here. Now, I purchased this at Joann's, I do believe. And you'll need your pieces cut six and a half inches by four and a half inches. Now, we're going to go on the six and a half inch side. We're going to take one of our shoe forms. We're literally going to glue our material to the back. Just like so right in the center just like this you want it down far enough to where it's not too there's not too much of a lip but there's enough that where when you cover it with our trim it won't show you'll have plenty of room just like so and we're going to go ahead and we're going to glue this to the back nice and even just like that okay nice even right on the shoe I'm gonna bring it up like so there we go perfect okay now what we want to do, now this is a lot of excess, so we are going to cut this off, guys, but it's better to be safe than sorry as far as having your excess material. Okay, what you want to do is you want to go right down in your tongue area here, and you want to put a little bit of hot glue, because you're going to poke this like so, just like that. Okay, there you go. Now... You can do one of two things here, and it's your choice. You can either glue it like this, okay, or you can literally, this is how I love to do it, guys. This is my choice here. I like to put a little bit of glue. I like to bring this over, and I like to secure it just like this. Then I like to bring the left side. I always work right to left with these for some reason. I like to bring the left side over here, okay? I just think this gives it a much crisper look. Left side over here, and we'll just like this, as tight as possible. Then, guys, you just want to tuck, tuck, and tuck some more, just like that, okay? Just like that. I think these are absolutely adorable. Now, what we're going to do, because it's our bee shoe, we're going to go ahead. I'm going to take some jute twine. Jute twine is so versatile and great. I love it. We're going to tie this around like this. Okay. Go ahead. We're going to just go ahead. We're going to tie this right around our little bee shoe here. Just like so. Around here, around here. Just like that. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead. We're going to tie just a regular shoestring bow be messy they can be any way you want them to be guys okay now
we're going to go ahead and we're going to put the trim on. Now I have to decide whether we want the black trim. Shiny black trim. Oh, I think that's perfect. I think that's going to be great. We are going to go ahead and put some hot glue on it. Just like so. Off, guys. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to finish our other shoe. We'll come back and we'll put some buttons on these. Oh my goodness, is this ever, ever cute. Let's see. And for the final touch to our little bee gnome shoes, we've added the sole to the bottom. This is a piece of black felt. I simply glued it right onto the square and cut around it. And then I have these little discs that I purchased at the Dollar Tree. They came in the pack of 100 and I have the little bee stickers that I purchased at a rummage sale. I'll have everything listed in my description box below. I think these turned out absolutely adorable. Our little bee gnome shoes. And if you like what you've seen today, go ahead and give me a great big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell next to your subscription and you'll be notified each time I upload a new video. I can also be found on Instagram and Facebook at Glitz and Stitches Home DIY. Again, I'd like to thank our hosts and co-hosts for this awesome challenge. Have a blessed day, everyone. Bye.